Hello YouTube, this is your host Michael Patriot and this is The View from the Left. For a long time now there's been a political discussion about a single-payer universal health care system, a system in which the government pays for any and all medical expenses for all individuals. Single-payer means that only one person pays, and universal means that all citizens are covered. Current health care bills propose a 2.2% increase in payroll or self-employment tax, but in return you will not pay deductibles or a monthly health insurance bill. For the average American household, you will save, at the very least, $3,000 a month. But there is almost a cognitive dissonance in the thinking that raising taxes is the worst thing that you could possibly do, even when it will save you money not just in the long run, but also month by month. It's almost as if we are in an abusive relationship with private insurance companies. They take advantage of our health, or lack thereof, and we not only allow this, we encourage it. This is partly due to the belief in supply-side trickle-down economics. This is the belief that if we make the rich richer, then that will trickle down to the working class through competition to lower the price of goods and services. But this line of thinking failed. It failed during Reagan's presidency, and it failed again during Nixon's presidency. Single payer was arguably first introduced in America in 1945 after the end of World War II, and President Harry Truman pleaded to Congress for a national health care plan. It was revitalized by Hillary Clinton during the first few months of her husband's pregnancy by the way of the National Health Security Act. The Republicans dubbed this Hillary Care, much like they dubbed Obama's health care reform Obamacare. It also called for the creation of the National Health Board, which would have been a seven-person panel to determine which procedures were medically necessary. This is not to say that a single-payer universal health care system won't have its drawbacks. Canada, for example, reports that its citizens may have to wait longer for medical care, and recently spent a billion dollars investigating the issue. And a medical issue which isn't especially life-threatening or urgent can have you waiting up to four and a half months to get a procedure. The biggest arguments against a single-payer universal health care system is that it's government controlled and the increased wait times. You see, some people have an issue with things being government controlled because they believe that a government that governs least governs best. I for one agree with Jon Stewart in his debate with Bill O'Reilly in 2012 when he said that a government that governs least doesn't necessarily govern best, but a government that governs best does govern best. The arguments for a single-payer universal health care system is that everybody will be covered. It'll decrease the amount of paperwork so that doctors can spend more time focusing on their sick patients. And it'll lower the cost of health insurance for everybody so parents won't have to decide between putting food on the table or taking their sick kids to the hospital. Now you may think, I don't want the government to take money out of my paycheck every month in order to pay for health insurance. Nevertheless, I could be paying for somebody else's health insurance. But here's the thing, your employer is already taking money out of your paycheck every month for health insurance purposes. Pharmaceutical companies will also suffer under this system, but it will no longer cost an arm and a leg to purchase prescribed medication. You see, Americans on average don't actually use more medical care than other countries do. However, we do pay a lot more for the medical care that we do get. Some of you may have also heard of a public option, which is a government-run insurance, which costs less than private insurance. But the issue with the public option is that you still have the same evils of the current system, which is Medicare for the poor and subsidized health care for the working class, while the wealthy don't get subsidized health care or Medicaid. A single-payer universal health care system is a Medicaid-for-all system, like John Conyers, the Dean of the House of Representatives' health care bill. 
A public option is not single payer, as the citizenry will still have to pay deductibles and a monthly cost, and it is not universal, as not everybody would have coverage. It also follows the same failed system of supply-side trickle-down economics. Hoping that driving down the price of one insurance company will drive down the price of all private health insurance companies through competition. Republicans, private health insurance companies, and Big Pharma are against a single-payer universal health care system. Why private health insurance companies and Big Pharma are against it is pretty obvious. Republicans are against it because, number one, they actually believe, or at least claim to believe, in supply-side economics. Number two, they believe in the deregulation of business. And number three, they receive a massive amount of funding from private health insurance lobbies. In fact, according to the Chicago Tribune written on October 4th, 2010, since January, the nation's five largest insurers and the industry's Washington-based lobbying arm have given three times more money to Republican lawmakers and political action committees than to Democrats. And, the largest insurers are also paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to lobbyists with close ties to Republican lawmakers who could be shaping health policy in January, records show. The next day, the Los Angeles Times reported, The industry would love to have a Republican Congress, said Wendell Potter, a former executive at Cigna Corporation, one of the country's biggest insurers. They were very, very successful during the years of Republican domination in Washington. A running joke in politics is that even though the Republicans want to repeal Obamacare, they don't actually have a health care plan in order to replace it with. Until now, as The Atlantic reports, the GOP plan would expand health savings accounts, offer refundable tax credits to subsidize the purchase of private health insurance, and decrease dependence on employer-sponsored plans, cap the tax exclusion for employer-provided health insurance, allow people to purchase health insurance across state lines, provide $25 billion in funding for high-risk pools over 10 years, devolve Medicaid to the states either through a block grant or a per capita allotment, partially privatize Medicare beginning in 2024 through a premium support option. There's no estimate for how much it would cost, how generous the tax credits would be, how many people it would cover, or how many people would be forced off of Medicaid or their Obamacare exchange policies. So basically, for all of their talk about how terrible Obamacare is, Republicans still don't have a better plan, as the House GOP aide told reporters, it is a framework. So, in summary, the Republicans don't actually have a comprehensive health care plan. They still believe in an outdated, failed system of supply-side economics, which is essentially making the rich richer, because that will somehow make the poor richer, and they don't want to lose a massive amount of funding that they get from private health insurance lobbies. The Democrats have Obamacare, but that was really only a short-term solution. What we need is a long-term solution. Now, in my opinion, single-payer universal health care system might be a big debate right now, but in a few years, we'll wonder how we ever lived without it, like with education and social security. I am your host, Michael Patriot, and this has been The View from the Left.